Imagine you wrote an amazing blog post about the history of pizza. How does Google know that it's not just another random article? Well, that's where schema markup comes into play. It's a special code you add to your website, blog posts, pages, and even products that tell search engines exactly what your content is about. Let's talk about this. Have you ever Googled something and come across this? What about this? These fancy extra pieces of information that get displayed on Google are called rich snippets, and they are a direct result of schema markup. By providing Google with additional context around your website and blog posts, they can then display enhanced results in their search engine ranking pages. And as you've probably experienced yourself, when rich snippets are displayed in Google results, those websites that the snippets come from typically experience more clicks than others for free which is why you definitely want to consider implementing schema across your site. And I'll even give you an example. I'm sure you've at some point Googled a how-to question and an FAQ rich snippet was presented to you at the very top of your SERP result. And not only did you click on one of the toggles, but I'm assuming that you also then proceeded to read on more about the topic being covered in the rich snippet. Or perhaps you Googled Thai restaurants around me and you got presented with a bunch of different options of Thai restaurants around you. These are all examples of schema markup being used. Now, before I walk you through how to set up schema on your WordPress website, let's talk about some of the most common types of schemas that you're going to want to explore. The main thing that you're going to want to do is set up a site-wide schema. This is what Google is going to use to essentially figure out who you are, whether you're a business or an individual, what your name is, your contact information, your company logo, and so on. And then depending on the kind of website that you're operating, you're going to want to create a default schema markup for your content because let's face it, if you're running a blog about productivity, you're not going to want to be configuring your schema for each individual blog post that you're, that you're putting out. Uh, you're going to want to have all of your posts inherit a default schema markup. And then if you want to change the type of schema being used in a particular blog post, do that on an individual basis. And I'll show you how to do this in a second. All in all, I would love for you to think of schema as labels in a library. You know how there are labels in libraries that let you identify books that are about history or books that are about fiction and fantasy. Well, schema markup helps search engines categorize your content as recipe or event or news article. And depending on the type of schema being used, it allows them to display richer information in search results. And like you've already seen, this can be anything from star ratings for your restaurant to videos for your recipes or even event details for your concert. All right, let's jump into my blog where I'm going to be walking you through how to set up basic schema markup for your site and your content. Now, you're going to see me using all-in-one SEO. This is the best SEO plugin that I've ever used on WordPress and I've used most of the big ones. So if you wanna grab a license for that, there should be a link popping up on screen right now. Perfect, so I'm in the back end of my blog and I'm going to operate under the assumption that you've already installed all-in-one SEO on your site uh, if you need help with that, I'll make sure to link either resources here or in the description box in case you need help with that. But let's just go ahead and power through this. So I'm inside All-in-One SEO, and the first thing that I wanna do is jump into Search Appearance. And here, under Search Appearance, you're gonna find some global settings that are going to help search engines really identify what your site is about and what people can expect from it. So if I scroll down to the very bottom here under Global Settings, you're gonna see that I have a section called Knowledge Graph. And I've never configured this before. And as you can see, this is a pretty terrible way of um, having my knowledge graph set up. Um, so first things first, the knowledge graph, if you hover over this question mark, it says Google, Bing, and other search engines use specific data from your schema markup to output data in their knowledge panels. This data is known as knowledge graph. Use these settings to change how that data looks. So in essence, this is the way Google is interpreting what our website is about. Uh, my website right now is named my blog. It's a pretty terrible name. Uh, you have an alternate website name. You can here specify whether you're a person or an organization. In my case, since it's my blog, we're gonna be operating under uh, the assumption that we're a person. And here we can also tell Google, hey, what person is this blog about? And we're gonna be able to filter through a list of users from our site and really pick out which user is uh, the owner or, you know, which, 
user does this block belong to, if that makes any sense. Perfect, so we're gonna give this a proper website name. Let's just do Tony Lewis, um, where money and marketing converge. And at least I've got a couple of keywords in there. I am a person. And this allows me to filter through a list of uh, people, users that are signed up into my website. Now I have two accounts here, I'm not sure why, but in essence, what you really wanna make sure is that the user that you pick out as being the owner of this uh, website or this business, um, that the Gravatar profile picture matches the picture that you want to display in Google search results. Because uh, since we're telling Google, hey, this blog is about a person, the profile picture of the user that you pick here may get displayed in the search results. So you wanna make sure that we're uh, at the very least picking out a user that we're comfortable uh, with its Gravatar profile picture, for example. I'm, I'm happy with this one. I'm gonna save changes. And the next thing that I'm going to want to do is jump over into content types. So content types essentially uh, is a place inside All-in-One SEO where we can customize the schema markup of all of our different content types that we have on our site, right? So if you've got WooCommerce installed, this is going to allow you to customize the schema markup or the default schema markup for your products. You're also going to be able to customize the default schema markup of your posts and uh, your pages. And uh, we don't need to do Thrive symbols, but yeah, let's go ahead and do the one for posts, for example. So we jump. let's jump into schema markup and in my case, if I toggle in, if, if I click on this toggle that reads uh, article, you're gonna see all of the, all of the different uh, possible schema markups that we can use. Anything from article to course, to data set, to movie, person, product, recipe, web page, and so on. So in my case, since my blog is mainly made up of blog posts, I'm just gonna leave this as article and I'm gonna leave this as blog post. Four pages, let's jump into schema markup as well. And there's a few different types of things that you can do. I mean, you could have, for example, um, pages that are made up of services. Like if you've got multiple services listed on your uh, on your website, if you've got if you're a handyman, for example, and you do uh, I don't know uh, plumbing and electrician work and things like that, well, that would be different services. In my case, uh, and for most of y'all's cases, you're probably just going to leave this as uh, the default web page. And now we can hit save. And that would already take care of most of my default schema markup uh, settings. Now let's jump over into my blog post really quick. I have a blog post here called How Arc Browser Has Supercharged My Productivity. There are some um, FAQs, well not FAQs, but there are technically speaking some questions that I answer inside, my, inside this article. And they are frequently asked questions that people have about Arc. Arc is a very popular browser that, that is uh, emerging right now. It's pretty cool, I must say. And something that we can do is, for example, by default, if I jump into the schema tab for this um, article, you can see how the schema being used is the one uh, that we just configured, right? Our default schema for all of our blog posts, which is the uh, schema of type article. Now we can technically speaking change this. And if I edit this type of schema, you can see how I've got the name of the article, the headline, uh, I'm missing a description, I am missing an image, I don't have keywords, and there is an author name, URL, and dates. So it's I have some work to do, I have some homework. But let's just say that we don't wanna use this particular schema for this blog post. Let's just say that we wanna do a, uh, an FAQ schema markup for this part, uh, blog post because I am answering some of those FAQ questions that I think people are going to be looking for on Google and I wanna to try to position this article at the very top of search engine rankings by going after some of those frequently asked questions. So I'm gonna delete this schema markup and I am going to generate a new one. And it's going to be a schema of type FAQ. FAQ, here it is, perfect. And here, as you can see, all I wanna see is already prompting me, okay, what is one of the questions that you're uh, tackling in this article? The rule of thumb is that the content that you're including in the FAQ schema markup for your article needs to be included inside the article itself, okay? So let me just um, do an example here really quick. Question, um, is Arc Browser free? Arc Browser is completely 
free for all Mac OS users. It should be available at no cost for Windows users soon. Boom. Okay, so that would be an FAQ question that I can tackle, right? I could add as many FAQ questions as I wanted to. I think I, I think there's no limit. But this just goes to show how, um, you know, it's really easy to go from one schema to a different one. Or, you know, if I want to create a new article of type recipe in my blog, I can just delete this one that I just created. Let's add a new one. And hey, I'm creating a new article of type uh, recipe or of type a how to like a tutorial on how to do something. I can always delete the schema that I'm using for this particular article and create a new one. I mean, it's that simple to configure um, schemas. Now, before we wrap it up, there are some FAQs, if you will, that I'd like to respond before anyone even asks about them. As of today, it's always best practice to simply pick one primary schema to use for each individual blog post. For example, if you're doing a review on the new Apple Vision Pros, the natural behavior would be for you to use schema markup of type review, and that would be good. But I've also seen people try to use the event schema markup for these types of things, right? I mean, Apple is launching their new augmented reality headsets. I mean, this is an actual event. Well, not really. It would be an event if you're hosting an actual event somewhere and you're selling tickets for it. Like if you're Tim Cook and you're hosting WWDC in Cupertino and you're inviting, you're inviting journalists to this conference, then yes, it would be okay for you to use the event schema. But reviews need to be clearly labeled as reviews. Now, there are sometimes use cases for nested schemas. Nested schemas are scenarios where you have a primary schema for a given blog post and then have another schema markup for a portion of your article. And this is best illustrated with an example. Let's say that I'm working on a blog post titled the best turkey recipe for Thanksgiving. My post would use schema markup of type recipe. But let's also imagine for a second that I also have a like a how to H2 section within the blog post where I provide a step-by-step -step procedure on how to make the turkey. I could technically speaking also make use of a how-to schema markup for this post as well as my recipe schema markup. But just remember that it's always best practice to make things super obvious to search engines and not make them work harder than they have to. They're just gonna like you better. And the last clarification that I'd like to make before we wrap it up is that Schema is great. It can really improve your click-through rates to your site and it has the power to potentially influence your SEO rankings, but it's also not a guarantee. I mean, the Google algorithm is really complex as you probably already know. So keep in mind that if you don't see immediate results, don't get frustrated. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Google making the calls, not you. Well, that concludes my overview on how to set up schema for your website and content. Any questions that you may have, I'm happy to take care of those in the comment section below. A big thumbs up button would be really appreciated if you found this video useful. And uh, yeah, I truly appreciate your time. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.